Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, May 20th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight. Well, a lot of my fantasies actually revolve around little girls who are in some way more powerful than I am. Eventually, my attraction became, you know, overwhelming to the point I had to go relieve myself in the bathroom. Salon doubles down on romanticizing pedophilia. After that, a Mao survivor has a dire warning for America. And how Bernie supporters are helping Trump inch towards the presidency. That's next. Where are you at? Why are you... Give me the job right now. Give me the job right now. Oh my God. I have a job. I have a new furniture. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Furniture refinishing. I have more. I have assistant people. I have people that do work for me. No, what? No, what? I'm going to have to go to the office. Why do we want to move furniture around? She's cutting the budget back. Well, if any of you Second Amendment enthusiasts were wondering where Trump stands on the gun issue, the NRA made it pretty clear today after they endorsed Donald Trump for president. This was Chris Cox, the executive director of the NRA's Institute for Legislative Action. He made this endorsement today saying, now is the time to unite. If your preferred candidate dropped out of the race, it's time to get over it. And Donald Trump came out and said, you know what, the Second Amendment is under a threat like never before. And he called crooked Hillary Clinton the most anti-gun candidate ever to run for office. And as he said before, she wants to abolish the Second Amendment and take your guns away, which she has made incredibly clear time and time again. So you can bet that it is never Hillary. Now, Trump has also come out in true Trumpian fashion, uh, responding to Clinton's claims that he is not qualified to be president. So he said, the fact that Hillary thinks the temporary Muslim ban, which she calls the Muslim ban, promotes terrorism, proves Bernie Sanders was correct when he said that she is not qualified to be president. You can look at the carnage all over the world, including the World Trade Center, San Bernardino, Paris, the USS Cole, Brussels, and an unlimited number of other places. She and our totally ignorant president won't even use the term radical Islamic terrorism. And by the way, ask Hillary who blew up the plane last night. Another terrible but preventable tragedy. And so here again, this is what people love about Trump. He's not afraid to speak out, even though everyone's gonna say, oh, he hates Muslims and he's not being politically correct. We get it, you're not allowed to speak out, hashtag not all Muslims. And this is actually another uh, astounding claim coming from the Eagles of Death Metal singer, who of course was at the Bataclan when it was attacked there in Paris. He is saying in a new interview that he actually saw with his own eyes in real time, Muslims celebrating in the street during the attack. So he says as he stepped out of the building, he saw them in the streets dancing, celebrating during the attack. He says there must have been some coordination. How did they know what was going on? Uh, he, he reminds everyone that a day after at the stadium, Muslims actually booed the moment of silence. And we barely heard about that in the press. And he also reiterated his claims that the Muslim security guards who were working at the Bataclan Theater on the night of the attack were complicit in the massacre. Uh, he points out how during the shooting, he went outside and the backstage door was propped open. How did that happen? And he also talks about two girls that he believes were involved. He said that they were at the venue, then they vanished before the shooting. Uh, they were in traditional Muslim garb. And of course, they got caught a few days later. And all of this is really interesting because he was forced to apologize when he talked about his experience that night a few months ago. He was forced to apologize and say, you know, I was just having PTSD. How could I have known or made those claims? But now he's doubling down and saying, this is what I experienced that night. This is exactly what I saw. And don't gaslight me, bro. Well, now French festivals have canceled uh, the Eagles of Death Metal over the remarks that he has made because you're you're not allowed. You can't you know facts over feelings are that's not the name of the game today. It's all about feelings over facts, and so they don't care about what your experience was. If you were actually there, actually present, actually on stage, could have possibly lost your life, and if you had. Uh, you know, you're a musician and you set up before the show and you're having these experiences and you're witnessing all of this uh, stuff that just doesn't add up, doesn't make sense, but you're not allowed to speak out. And in fact, 
everyone needs to just use the hashtag, not all Muslims. But you know what? Here's a new hashtag for you. It's only Muslims that are blowing themselves up since 9-11. They're the only ones that are going out, strapping suicide vests to themselves or bombs to planes and blowing them up. So it's time for people to step back from the PC and stop correcting everybody's language and start getting with the facts and the reality that this is what is absolutely going on. And it's this policing of the English language that we really need to start talking about because it's getting scary. People are truly trying to rewrite words and rewrite science. And it's this Orwellian control people are finally starting to realize and fight back. That includes a Republican Senator, Tom Cotton, who is now speaking out against this Orwellian uh, control over words. And he's talking about the response the Obama administration has had to telling uh, businesses that they can't call criminals felons, that now they have to call them justice-involved individuals. This is the DOJ. They've actually announced they're not going to call criminals felons anymore because it's too hard on them emotionally. So Tom Cotton speaks out. He mocks their decision, um, calling it a crime against the English language. And he said, it reflects the dangerous mindset that criminals are victims, that the justice system somehow happened to them. They didn't commit a crime. They became involved in the justice system. And he added again, criminals are not victims. Criminals are criminals. Victims are victims. <sighs> Somebody better call the thought police because I'm getting triggered there by those facts. Now, something else that, I mean, like this is, I feel we are in upside down world, uh, Friday the 13th, backwards day. The Charlotte Observer actually put out an editorial uh, making the case that girls need to overcome their discomfort of seeing male genitals in the locker room. They are assuming that the bathroom bill is going to eventually be repealed or declared illegal. And so they're saying that they need to get over this feeling of discomfort at the site of male genitalia when transgender facilities are allowed in North Carolina. And uh, the Washington Times reports that this is what the Obama administration nudged the rest of the country toward Friday. Yes, the thought of male genitalia in girls' locker rooms and vice versa might be distressing to some, but the battle for equality has always been in part about overcoming discomfort with blacks sharing facilities, with gays sharing marriage, and then realizing it was not nearly so awful as some people imagined. So the fact that they're saying that it was nudged by the Obama administration is very hilarious considering they're now um, gonna be arresting people and, and punishing businesses and things like that. It's being forced down people's throats, not to mention that it has nothing to do with race relations or even gay marriage because black people don't choose the color of their skin. Gay people do not choose to be gay where we've already now figured the science is settled on all of this. But now here again, this is one thing that apparently scientists got wrong about two genders, uh, but this is the monumental difference that they want people to make. And they also say in this article that the attacks that girls might suffer of a man entering the bathroom and saying, oh, you know, I need to be in here. The attacks will be rare. So it's okay. It is totally okay. And another thing that they're trying to massage into our brains that it's okay is pedophilia. For whatever reason, Salon has once again uh, tr pulled out their resident pedophile to make the claim that pedophilia is okay. It's an alternative sexual orientation. And this is a, a video now that's been posted on Salon's Facebook page. Uh, this is Todd Nickerson. Now, of course, he first came to uh, prominence when he was explaining how lusting after children was merely a, an alternative sexual orientation and that people should be understanding and supportive. Well, now he's come out and he's um, in this new video explaining how he fell in love with a five-year-old girl that he was babysitting who was advanced for her age. And what does Salon do? As he's explaining how he's having fantasies of this five-year-old girl and, and to the point where he had to go excuse himself, relieve himself in the bathroom, <laughs> disgusting, they show this romanticized, soft lighting picture of a little girl dancing and twirling around so that you and I can understand 
what the eyes of a pedophile, how they're viewing your little five-year-old girl. I mean, this is absolutely infuriating that they're trying to normalize this and give this guy a platform by, you know, romanticizing this image of a little girl uh, who this guy says, you know, he had to go and take care of himself in the bathroom because he's so freaking deranged. And they're trying to peddle this out as, you know, people just need to be more accepting. But Nickerson has previously admitted in the past that he would engage in sexual uh, activity with a child that he loved if she initiated it. Okay, and this is the same guy that claimed that that five-year-old girl that he was babysitting once came on to him. So this guy is clearly, totally freaking sick and delusional, but they want you to just be accepting of it, be loving. It's an alternative sexual orientation. Hey, if you're open up to that, you know, you must, you should be open up to this too, and, and you better be open to it because soon it's going to be forced down your throat just like the rest of these laws. And again, we are totally in Wally world and completely screwed. And if you don't believe me, you know, or this or that, take a look at this video. There is an angry mob, once again, surrounding a Trump supporter. Thank goodness most of these kids are not old enough to vote right now, but you can see how they're totally programmed. Um, and here, this girl is arguing with this Trump supporter, uh, explaining what is Donald Trump gonna do to create jobs? And of course, the woman does explain exactly how tariffs work, and she's not satisfied with that. Take a look. Info Wars! Love you guys! Wait, so Donald Trump promised you jobs. With what? With jobs. You said if he becomes president, you'll, we'll have more jobs. He's going to bring jobs back from other countries because they pay them nothing. It's okay, slave no, 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 no. Before you elaborate on the labor. jobs, no, before you elaborate on your jobs, how is he going to do it? He's not he's telling you his tariff plan. on them. He's telling you his plan, but do you know, is he able to go through with his plan? Yeah, it's a fact, it is a fact that tariffs yeah, do work. Yeah. Agree. You know, this country, Congress is gonna yeah. agree. before the income tax, this country where there were no personal income taxes, None. there were only tariffs. And they paid, they, 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 1913, they did two things. They created the Federal Reserve and, and they created the personal income tax. So before that, tariffs have always run this country. Now, you put 35% taxes on everything coming in from Mexico, and guess what? Companies are going to bring their jobs back here rather than pay a 35% tariff. But what's going to happen to the other country? Your teachers are that's their problem. Well, but if we're giving them the jobs, what, the, what are they going to do? You know what? What the, what the what the Mexican people have to do is do exactly what we did: rise up and have a race of revolution. But it ain't trying. You think they're sitting there with the chihuahuas? Like, what the Wait, fuck are you no, thinking they're you know doing? They, they disarmed the Mexicans How? just like they disarmed the French. They disarmed the English. And the minute they disarm us, it's over for us. How, how do you get English, French, and fucking... How are we, we going to rise if he becomes president? Because he's, he's, he's really doing... How is he going to help me? How is he going to help me? Trump is not wasting money on that. The money I paid is to wait a for a ticket. Why would you pay $200? Why would you pay $200? Everybody, everybody in there paid $200 a ticket. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no. No, where the money's going to pay off Chris Christie's debt. Why can't Chris Christie pay off debt? And this is where it gets a little bit frustrating because we're always saying, you know, engage these people, let them speak how they feel, and then, you know, bring them some facts and challenge their ideas a little bit. But here, this woman is actually bringing facts, explaining how tariffs work, explaining how Trump would bring jobs back to this country. That doesn't satisfy this person who clearly just wants to argue for the sake of arguing. Well, this week marked the 50th anniversary of China's cultural revolution. It was a chaotic period of purging and punishment. It began May 16th, 1966, and it lasted in different phases until the Communist Party 
uh, chairman, Mao, died 10 years later. Now, this was led in part by Mao's Red Guards. They were a paramilitary social movement of up to 10 million young people. These were middle schoolers and high schoolers who were torturing and killing uh, their society's leaders. Many of them informed on their own parents as well as family members who they alleged were having counter-revolutionary thoughts and actions, even if they didn't really know what those terms meant. They destroyed ancient works of art, burned books, and roamed around the country like stormtroopers. They were enforcing their ideology in, in very brutish ways in the name of revolution. Sort of sounds familiar. We're seeing a lot of that happening in the country today. Now, hundreds of thousands of people died, possibly up to a million and a half people. In fact, 36 million more were persecuted. Now, my guest today is Lily Tang Williams. She is a libertarian candidate running for Senate, and she grew up under the Cultural Revolution, under Mao's regime. Lily, thank you so much for joining us today and, of course, for speaking out against what you experienced there. Uh, I wanted to get your point of view on something that happened yesterday. Google, they always do this doodle, and they actually honored uh, an, ap an activist who admired Mao, Marx, and Osama bin Laden. Now, she's a, a radical, of course. She did a lot of great things, but this is a woman who actively spoke out against these people who really wanted to destroy Western society. What do you think about that? I wish I had the opportunity to go face with people personally to tell them what my life was like during the Cultural Revolution. Because, uh, you know, what they say, what they do today, just very similar what happened to us. And really, we don't want to go there. It's, it's a total nightmare. It's a total tyranny. Everybody was a slave except a few on the top. And uh, I wish I could have the opportunity to actually face her off. Yeah. Well, that's something that we are trying to point out a lot of times is that these young people don't realize they're going to be used. And then once their dirty work is done, they're going to be spit out just like the machine. Now, Lily, we're going to uh, be right back with you because I want to find out just exactly what it was like living under Mao and how that sort of parallels with what's going on today. We'll be right back. Lily, thank you so much for joining us once again today. Now, you grew up during the Cultural Revolution. Your uncles were actually taken to the forest for re-education. And you, I just really admire you for speaking out about this. Obviously, you say there on your website that you hate to see the country you love becoming more like the country that you left. Explain to people what this was like living during this time. Well, I share my uncle's story and uh, I'm trying to warn the college students today on campuses wanting to silence other people for their freedom of speech. You know, my uncle's generation was very sad. They were used by Chairman Mao to purchase the political enemies during the Cultural Revolution. And once Mao used them and they become violent in the cities and school were shutting down, and he said, uh, time to go to the countryside to be re-educated by peasants. And the policy is that you can only keep the youngest one in the family to stay home. So my grandma, granddad lost the three sons just like overnight. They all had to go to the countryside. And that was like a 10 years of suffering. So my uncle was 17. By the time he came home, he was 27. No high school diploma. Health was ruined. When they tried to come home, they were silenced too by the government. So they basically suffered the consequences of their own actions early years when they were young and naive and trusted the big government. And uh, how did they come back during that time? They had to threat the government to say, let us come back to the cities now. We have suffered enough, or we are going to kill ourselves on the rail railway tracks. They were planning a massive suicide and with the posters and blood you know, on those posters on the walls to say, let us come home or all will kill ourselves. That's how they got the state government's attention in Sichuan and across other countries in the States too. And so they eventually let them come home, but their parents had to retire earlier to um, basically um, give their jobs to their children. And, uh, and that's how my three uncles eventually all come back. But it, it's just, a, you know, that's long years suffering. Think about 10, 12 years. Right. And so what do you think when you watch videos now, you see a lot of these uh, young people out protesting uh, Trump rallies and things like that, and they all seem to be parroting these same phrases that they're obviously learning in school. Everyone says the same thing. 
but whenever you ask them to uh, explain themselves just a little bit, they have no idea what they even mean when they're saying racist, homophobic, xenophobic, socialism, communism, it's so great, down with America and capitalism. They can't expand on those ideas, yet they are fighting voraciously for them. So does that kind of ring any bells with what happened in the past? Well, of course, uh, you know, you know, the other things offended me, made me feel really worried for our country. I saw a college student on campus of University of uh, Puerto Rico last fall wearing a mouse T-shirt. I said, uh, "Why are you wearing his T-shirt?" He said, "Mouse is cool." I said, "Mao is cool." I said, "I'm Chinese immigrant. I grew up under Mao's regime, and uh, he is a mass murderer. And uh, 50 to 80 millions of Chinese." Uh, were killed. I mean, some were dying of massive starvation, some were murdered. I said, why do you adore somebody who's a mass murderer? It's like those kids, they just don't know what happened in history. And I don't blame them because our government schools don't teach our kids real history. You know, there are folks on other things that are doomed to be important leftist agendas, but our kids are not to be told to be true Americans who, who really treasure our constitutional rights and individual liberty. So I said, uh, you know, we have freedom of speech. You know, uh, you know, why do you want to silence your professors and other people on your campuses? Because uh, you call them racist or whatever, but they say so, someday that might happen to you. So I tell them about the Cultural Revolution Red Guard sad stories. You know, they were silenced, but then, they were silencing other people under Mao's, you know, so-called revolutionary campaign and uh, criticize all their professors, all the intellectuals, and uh, make them to wear pine cards every day to denounce them publicly. But then, they, when they wanted to tell the truth about their sufferings in the countryside in the mountains, and they were silenced. Some were sent to educational camp because, uh, because they don't want to hear the truth from them. So my lesson to the college students today is that learn the history. Don't repeat it. I do not want to say cultural revolution on our college campuses today. The freedom of speech is precisely because you might not like or approve other people's speeches, but they have a right to do so. It, you know, you don't have to like it, you don't have to prove it, but then when someday you have to say something other people don't like, and then you have right to do to say so. So we have to defend each other's right to true freedom of speech. Otherwise, this country will go down the path of the communist China. Right. And Lily, now we know like the Red Guards that they destroyed uh, works of art. They burned books, um, got rid of the intellectuals that you know needed to be reeducated. So let's look at today how we're seeing them wanting to tear down statues because they're racist or demanding that their professors be fired or the deans of the schools have to uh, excuse themselves because they are considered racist or they're not bowing down to the pressures of these students who are uh, really saying that their feelings matter over anything else. And the only way that you can protect their feelings is by not disagreeing with them and not having counter-revolutionary thoughts. Well, I think our college students are being really naive. They have a tendency to trust, uh, you know, big, powerful government. And they have a tendency to believe they, you know, like uh, they left this radical agendas. Everything's racist. They're also extremely sensitive without rational thinking. You know, they're, you know, how about the uh, people's rights, the property rights? So you, you, you can just tear down any statues that offend you. Or you you can just uh, you know um, you know criticize other organizations and business who you know don't do the sense you like right. But it's I, also I, I it's also a, they're also erasing a very important part of history. Yes, I know that it might cause you to be a little bit uncomfortable if you see statues up of people who may have owned slaves at one time, but they also did some really great things for this country as well. So why not use that as something to remind people of where they came from, what their history was all about, rather than completely destroying it? Because if you have no idea of where you came from, then you have no idea of where you're going and where you're headed, and you can be easily controlled and corralled. Right, I agree. During cultural losing, actually, regards also destroy churches and temples and I was raised as a Buddhist. I remember we could not go to our temples, even pray as a Buddhist and ask for blessings anymore. 
because this was all those were politically incorrect and they want you to be only loyal to the Chairman Mao, to communism, to the Communist Party. So they shut down all the temples. Even Confucius temples were shutting down. And my grandma's uh, uh, like old traditional like, uh, like sewing machine was confiscated because Regard said, you got to contribute to the country's great steel production campaign. And why do you keep this for yourself? You're so selfish. You need to contribute to the country. My grandma had to let her sewing machine to go. That was only thing valuable in her apartment. And she was so afraid that Red Guards were going to find out about her past. When she was a second wife of a mountain outlaw group, she remarried to my stamp grand and later to kind of protect herself to too. So she said, okay, you can, you can take this. And she had to give that up. Even though I knew how much she really treasured that she used it to make clothes for us. So, you know, the, the, the young people today got to really learn about the individual rights instead of only focus on collectivism, public goods. Those are all communist socialist jargons. Lily, again, thank you so much for speaking out. Now, you are running for U.S. Senate. You say you were a slave once before and you're not going to be one again. Tell people how they can support you and your run for Senate. Well, this is a grassroots campaign. I need you to follow me, support me. Donate on my website, lilyforliberty.com. I have a Facebook page, Lily for Liberty, and Twitter also, Lily for Liberty. And follow me and join my campaign for our uh, freedom, for limited government. I, um, by telling my story, I'm really telling you guys that, uh, you know, I really fear for big unlimited government. Our country is going down the wrong direction. So come to join me and support me. And I need your help and tell other people about my stories. I don't want to see this country I love really becoming in China ever again. Thank you, Lily. Thank you. I come from corporate I have my own company. So have you created this job in the middle class? What job? Where you at? Why you? Give me the job right now. Give me the job right now. What right job? I have, what job? I have a used furniture company. I create furniture refinishing. I have movers. I have assistant movers. I have people that do work for me. But what? But what are the movers doing for us? So for him to come to here and see do you support Chris Christie cutting the budget for education? No, I want to so And this whole thing here is because of him being in debt. Yes. Why is it out of $2,000? Right. Uh, so but that's not fair to ask New Jersey. Why is it out of $2,000? Because us why? Why? people why? who graduated yeah. from Make college America love all again. star in debt. But why? So that's not fair to us. It's about the value of our city in debt. I'll tell you what. Viva Mexico! I went to college. I had to work for the best. I had to work for the best. That's not right. It's because why is he, he's taking away from you know why? Education. I will tell you why. Because they made federal loans available to students. The colleges said, oh, there's that money. We'll ra I went to college for four years, graduated from the University of Wisconsin. It cost my parents $12,000. That's how many years ago was that? I don't mean to bring your How many years ago was that? Every I graduated. Congratulations, I owe $50,000. Years. 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 But that's still not right. That there's a lot of grants that people can take advantage of today in scholarship opportunities where they don't have any money But they're still in debt because that's being taken away from our students and taking away the budget. Why are our elementary school teachers who are helping shape our future tomorrow being paid <laughs> Next to nothing. Next to nothing. They have to pay out second and third jobs. You know why? Why do you want to talk about the supply and demand? There no bullshit! They should get paid more! Many, many, many of you, there are so many unemployed teachers. The wages have gone down. Simple supply and demand. Now, if you're a nuclear physicist or you're a brain surgeon like who's the brain surgeon guy? Doctor. Carson, Carson, I'll bet he makes a million and a half dollars a year because well, we're they're rare. New Jersey and right. him paying back stuff, however much they're paying back. That's what's taken away from us New Jersey residents. I was born in 
raised Wait here. Wait a second. I give back to my community. I do every second. I take care, and Chris Christie does not take care of the drug and alcohol uh, epidemic that's going on in the state of New Jersey. Okay? Whatever you're getting, is whatever, some of these things open is because of private insurance, which goes back to corporate greed, okay? What happened to the people that need help? You guys worry about the homeless people, but where are you guys giving their help to? Where's that money going? Where's that money going back to these people that we can help today? Well, I will tell you this. Anybody who takes drugs is a stupid fool. That's, that's not right. I've never taken I mean, a drug a day of drugs. my life. I have the, the not people who take drugs that use every drugs are single day. Okay? So like, well, I've never had any type of, of drugs. You know, people take drugs the same way they drink alcohol. You know, it, it's, it's, it's not really a big problem. It's not. That's... I'm, I'm, a, I'm American. I, I was born right here in the, in the United States. You didn't take the pills this morning. You have some English accent with you. Yes, I, I, I do. I'm, 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 I'm sorry if it is. No, what's wrong with having an accent? No, no. I, like I said, she's, she's born here, my friend. What I have to say. Why, why is there a problem with the other accent? I think it's great. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. Very great. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Pip, Wait, Pip and all that. Do you have to have money in order? In order to help yourself as a drug addict, you have to have money. You have to come for money. Okay? So when I have drugs, you have to have money. No, you do. No, you How much are they? They're like $5. They're $5 bags. They're $5 bags. Five dollar bags. $5 Info Wars. Love you guys. Wait, so Donald Trump promised you jobs. With what? With jobs? You said if he becomes president, you'll, we'll have more jobs. He's going to bring jobs back from other countries because they pay them nothing. It's okay, slave. No, 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 no. Before you elaborate on the labor. jobs, no, before you elaborate on your jobs, how is he going to do it? He is not he's telling you his tariff plan. on them. He is telling you his plan, but do you know is he able to go through with his plan? Yeah, it is a fact, it is a fact that tariffs yeah, do work. Yeah. Agree. You know, this country, Congress is gonna yeah. agree. before the income tax, this country where there were no personal income taxes, <laughs> there were only tariffs. And they paid, they, 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 1913, they did two things. They created the Federal Reserve and, and they created the personal income tax. So before that, tariffs have always run this country. Now, you put 35% taxes on everything coming in from Mexico, and guess what? Companies are going to bring their jobs back here rather than pay a 35% tariff. What's going to happen to the other country? Your teachers are already that's their problem. Well, but if we're giving them the jobs, what, the, what are they going to do? You know what? What the, what the what the Mexican people have to do is do exactly what we did: rise up and have a race of revolution. Infowars. You know, I've been on Infowars a couple times. Yeah, you have. For jury nullification. Okay, what's your name? Edward Fortune, the New Jersey weed man. I'm actually running for Congress this year, so I'm out here getting signatures. I'm a big, big advocate for jury nullification. If you look up uh, on Infowars and you look up jury nullification, you'll see I did a couple of interviews in the past, you know, about jury nullification. So what do you think about Donald Trump? Fuck Donald Trump. <laughs> no, you know what? I shouldn't have said it just like that. You know, I actually used to work for Donald Trump. I worked in Ivana Trump's restaurant for two years back in the 80s. I waited on Donald Trump all the time. Actually, if he wasn't running for president, I mean, he's great for certain things. He's a great... TV reality show. He's actually a great construction guy, development guy, but he is not presidential material. And that's really what I think. He's just not presidential material. Uh, he's a hothead. He's a loose cannon. He he does things off the fly. And that's great if, you know, you're, you're talking about building a building, but you're talking about the leader of the free world. He has the button to push the nuclear bomb. He he can start a war with Russia tomorrow. He can start a war with Korea. He can start a war. He can disrupt our allies. Like that's too much too much power for a irrational guy. And when I say irrational, like you know, I'm actually guilty of being very similar to him because I do things off the cuff and I do things at the moment and sometimes I go back and wish I had time to take that back or to do it a different way. But when you're talking about, he has the power of the most powerful military in the world. 
he would be in control of the, the second or third largest economy in the world. You know, our currency system is the world's currency system. You can ha have this man in charge of all that and give him the option to pick a Supreme Court justice. Oh, my God. No way. Whew. All right. So if we're going to get specific, just specifically his policies, his ideas, what do you like, dislike the most? Um, I think it's a divider. You know, this is the United States of America. You know, and we're not, you know, I admit, we're not quite as united as we should be, but putting Donald Trump in charge of America would be divisive. It would be dividing the United States. So, you know, the, the DNC is close by in Philly. Um, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. I, went, I, I went to the Republican uh, convention in, in 2000, and I didn't think I'd ever see a convention come to Philly again. So this is great. It's a Democratic convention, and I think it's going to be a lot of turmoil. I am a burning for Bernie guy. You know, I believe in Bernie's message, and I'm sorry Hillary lost me. Her, her, her adherence to, to Bill Clinton's uh, 1995 crime bill, 1993 crime bill. You know, super predators. You know, we talk about Harry Anzinger, Richard Nixon, but you know what? The greatest uh, uh, increase in prison population actually occurred under Bill Clinton's watch. And she was down with it. She can't unsign her name or divorce herself from that political issue. She never even divorced him. She can't divorce herself from his political policies. You know, and she is strapped to the 1993 crime bill. You know, where us, us so-called super predators were residing. <laughs> and oh my God, I can go on and on and on about the war on drugs and how Bill Clinton's policies helped it. She strapped to it. Alex Jones here with a quick note here on InfoWars Nightly News with Leanne McAdoo. George Clooney, one of the biggest fake liberal con men of all time, in my opinion, is really panicked, and so is his management team, after a video shot last week by Paul Joseph Watson has more than 5 million views on Facebook and Twitter. The problem is he has all these bodyguards with guns, but he wants us disarmed. Then he came out against Donald Trump, saying Donald Trump hates Muslims and women when it's radical Muslims that are enslaving women. And this guy has giant $100 million chateaus in Europe and hasn't invited one single refugee in. And now he's upset that the new media, 5 million views, pointing out that he is just so incredibly conceited and sits up there bumbling around, as you'll see at the start of this video, unable to talk without his notes. It's sickening. So we're going to show you this viral video that's got him so scared right now. But I want to tell George something quickly. <laughs> George, you're not that bad. Bono, admittedly, will raise hundreds of millions of dollars and give 1.2% to charity while telling folks it's all going to charity. So you don't get the award for the biggest scumbag. The Clinton Foundation keeps 50% of the money from the little black Haitian kids. So we're just pointing out that you're trying to join this club. It's sickening. You're conceited. We don't like it. Now, I just barged in here on the Nightly News to tape this so we can air this tonight. Leanne McAdoo, what's your view on George Clooney snickering uh, right behind you there? Well, I think it's just amazing how the machine has been able to prop him up all of these years when you can look at his dismal uh, numbers of any movie that he makes. I mean, nothing does well. When we were there at Amerigeddon, uh, they had actually been told that the theaters where Amerigeddon was showing in was doing better than the George Clooney movie, showing in the same exact theaters. So here's a person who comes out and just wants to lecture everyone in America about what they need to be doing with their lives when he's so hypocritical and the fact that we point him out on, uh, point that out and it's gone viral, of course he's shaking in his boots. The veil well, is kind of pulled aside. Yeah, Toto's done his job. That's a great point. How does he buy a hundred plus million dollars, this report's about to show, villa in Europe and like six or seven other big mansions, some of them $10 million, $20 million a piece. I mean, where's the money coming from when this guy can barely even get people into the box office? Well, enough about Clooney. We're going to go directly to Paul Joseph Watson's viral report titled F. George Clooney. There's not going to be a President Donald Trump. Um, that's not going to happen. Uh, and it's not going to happen because we're not going to be used. Fear is not going to be something that we're going to, uh, that's going to be, uh, 
what drives our country. We're not going to be scared of Muslims or, or, or immigrants or, you know, women. The worst thing about George Clooney isn't the unremitting bull that streams out of his mouth. It's the way he always acts as if he's got the moral high ground. You don't have the moral high ground. You're supporting one of the most corrupt politicians in generations. You're supporting a woman who took a hundred million dollars from Gulf state dictators. Countries responsible for some of the worst human rights abuses on the planet. You're supporting a woman who's in bed with Saudi Arabia, a country that bankrolled ISIS Al-Qaeda and was involved in 9-11. Trump is actually a, a, a result in many ways of the fact that much of the news programs didn't follow up and ask tough questions. That's the truth. Really? So if Trump wasn't asked hard questions, why do studies show that he got the most negative coverage out of any Republican candidate? You know, the ratings go up because they can show up empty podium saying Donald Trump is about to speak. Mm. You know, as opposed to taking those 30 seconds and saying, well, let's talk about refugees, which is the biggest crisis that's going on in the world right now. Okay, George, let's talk about the refugees because it makes complete complete sense that you would throw your support behind Saudi Arabia's preferred candidate. You see, Clooney and the Saudis have a lot in common when it comes to refugees. They both whine and bitch about refugees all day long while taking in precisely zero refugees. Saudi Arabia has 100,000 air-conditioned tents with bathroom and kitchen facilities that can house 3 million people sitting empty for most of the year. How many Syrian refugees have the Saudis taken in? None. George Clooney visits Angela Merkel to lecture Europe about how they're not doing enough for Muslim migrants, despite accepting millions of them over the past year. How many Syrian refugees has George Clooney taken in? None. Zero. Nada. Zilch. The guy's got five frigging mansions, three of which are in Europe. He's just bought another one in Britain for 10 million pounds. Clooney and his wife have got room for a new swimming pool, a home cinema, a library, a steam room, a spa, a gym, a wine cellar, and eight empty bedrooms. But no room for any refugees. So Clooney, when are you gonna do your bit for the refugees you care so deeply about? Or is this just one long, tiresome exercise in virtue signaling? Hmm, I wonder. How dare you lecture Germans about accepting more refugees from the comfort of your $100 million Lake Como Villa. While people in villages like Sumte, with a population of little over 100, are inundated by 750 unassimilated Muslim migrants. We've lost the ability to, to get to and tell the truth and get to the facts. Seriously, this is a guy who throws $350,000 a plate fundraisers for Hillary, and then has the nerve to get on TV the next day to complain about getting big money out of politics. This is a guy who lectures Hollywood about diversity, yet whose new movie doesn't feature one single black actor. He's a total hypocrite, and I'm sick of seeing his smug, self-satisfied face spewing out meaningless platitudes while the media makes out like he's Jesus f***ing Christ. Clooney once angrily lectured a journalist who called one of his movies boring. You make a lot of films yourself, yeah? I'd like to see you make a film before you get to talk about it. What a jerk, said Clooney. Well, I'd like to see you listen to the parents of women and children raped by Muslim migrants in Europe before you get to talk about it. I'd like to see you house a single Syrian refugee in one of your numerous palatial mansions before implying that we're all racist for expressing concern about the millions of Muslim migrants pouring into Europe. George Clooney is a total prick. George Clooney. Well, that's it for the show tonight. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you here again next week at 7 p.m. Central. Uh, excuse me. We're asking people if they know their First Amendment rights. You know your First Amendment rights, bro? Okay, well, I'm glad that he does know. Excuse me, sir. We're asking people if they can name their First Amendment rights. I guess not. No, guess not? All right. There's an honest gentleman, though. Yeah. Passionate about her freedom yeah. of speech. Okay. Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech, religion, press. Uh, you got some money, too. Uh, hmm. I'll go to you real quick. Uh, I think it's like to overthrow the, like, not overthrow no. the government, but like protest. Religion 
<laughs> like redress or grievances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We're asking people if they know their First Amendment rights. The right to text, apparently. Right, we're asking people if they can name their First Amendment rights. Okay. First Amendment rights, sir? Sir? No? Hello, ladies. We're asking people if they can name their First Amendment rights. No? We've had so many people who have refused to comment. I guess they are trying to exercise their First Amendment right to free speech or lack thereof, as some of the cases may be. Let's see what these people have to say. How you doing, guys? We're asking people if they can name their First Amendment rights. First Amendment. First Amendment. Um, freedom of speech, freedom of? Uh, religion. OK. Um, freedom of the press. Freedom of the press. Oh, very good. We're going to be sophomores next year in high in school. High. In high oh, school. wow. First Amendment rights, freedom of speech, freedom of? <laughs> the First Amendment right? Yes, sir. Uh, freedom of speech, religion. Can you name your First Amendment rights? Freedom of speech, freedom of religion. That's about, that's well, all I know. Well, you know, most Americans don't even know religion is included, so you are ahead of the curve. All right, good. <laughs> Very good. Oh my gosh, you have to ask me this now. All right, I'll give you one. Freedom of speech. Oh, of course, okay. Um, freedom of religion. Uh, speech? Uh, no. Um, freedom of... I have no idea. No idea? <laughs> so, like freedom of speech and freedom of religion. Hmm? I don't know. Don't I don't know? know what is First Amendment. You don't know? Are you from... Where are you from? I'm from China. Uh, isn't that the... Uh, so Second Amendment is freedom of speech. First Amendment would be the... No. Second Amendment... I'm an idiot. The First Amendment is the freedom of speech. Second Amendment is the right to bear arms. Freedom of the press. Freedom of the press? I yeah. think. Yes. I mean, there are other amendments. Freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, freedom of religious practice, 